G'day, how you doing? Adam Williams here from Easy Way Photography. I have another short demonstration of how incredible this five-step workflow can be. Once again, I want you to imagine this is one of your raw files. This is quite a nice starting point, actually. It's one of my favorite images. And an interesting point, actually, this is one of the first images, the very first images, where I started telling stories from right within my heart, very personal stories, through my landscape photography. I've often suffered periods in my life with anxiety and depression and this is one of the first images where I really tried to infuse, I mean artistically infuse my photography with feelings of gloominess and loneliness, isolation, anxiety and depression. So I'm going to show you how this particular workflow can really transform a, a relatively average image here into something really quite spectacular and at the same time try and get that gloomy kind of feeling into this image as well. So let's jump in there. Let's do this. Okay, so once again, you might have heard me talk about this, but to really make an image sing and have incredible impact, what we want to do is we want to choose the most interesting area in this image. So in this case, these three rock formations in the center there being the subject, that's the most interesting. So it's kind of our job as a photographer to then make this as interesting as possible, that area, so that our viewers are not confused as to why we felt the need to take the photo in the first place, if you like. So what we're going to do to make an area the most interesting it possibly can be, we, we use three tools. We add light, we add contrast, and we add color. And then in the surrounding areas, we can just fade them out a little bit, make them less interesting, by removing color, removing light, and removing contrast. Let's take a look at that. So let's do this. Initially what we'll do is we might color correct. So Command or Control J, Image Menu, Adjustments, Match Color, click the Neutralize there, click OK. Not a huge adjustment, but it's just taken a little bit of that blue out, which has done a great job. OK, now let's just double check our horizon is straight, Crop Tool, Straighten tool, click and drag across there. Pretty close, click OK. Let's do an auto curves, curves, auto. Now obviously this is not a step-by-step -step tutorial style, it's more of a demonstration of what Photoshop and this five-step workflow can do for your landscape photography. So we've done that auto curve, that's pretty good, but let's take a look. Hold down Alt or Option and click Auto again. And we'll just see what else other options are here. That's pretty good. We'll run with that. Click OK. Okay. Giving it a lot more light. Okay, now, as I said, it's our job to make the subject as interesting as possible. We're going to add a little bit more light into that central region. Curves does all our lightening, darkening, and contrast. One point in the middle, raise up, Command or Control I, B for brush, making sure that brush is in white. And we'll just give that a little bit of light, not too much, just sort of spread that around the center. Absolutely beautiful. Let's, let's add a little bit of light and dark. Let's pretend the light was coming from up in that region there. In fact, let's create that initially. Let's darken off the surrounds a little bit. Curves. To darken and reduce contrast, we can grab this white point right at the top and drag this curve down like so. Look at that. Command or Control I to invert. And actually, I'll make that a little smaller. This will also, it will help to add attention in on the subject itself, but it will also um, start to build up that gloomy feeling as well that we're trying to go for here. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Okay, the light's kind of coming through there on that angle. Okay, looking good. Let's add that light, directional light, onto this rock here. Curves. Brighten up, okay? Initially on the light wood side, I suppose you'd call it. So on the, the light's coming here, so on this side, we'll add a little bit more light like that. 
You know, nice big brush paint outside the lines. Beautiful, no need for fancy masks. Although, within the course, I will teach you the fancy masks as well, because we do need them sometimes. That looks good. We're just trying to build up a little bit of light, directional light there. Let's add some shadow on the other side of the rocks. Curves, drag down. Command or Control I. A little shadow in the water there, I guess. And that looks pretty good. Let's add a little contrast into that area because contrast is also very interesting. Curves. One point there, one point up high. That one goes up a little. This one down a little. That'll do. Command or Control I. And again, we'll just paint that in the middle. Okay. I feel like I want the sky to be a little more gloomy. Curves. We'll darken down again. Looking good. Command or Control I to invert. And just around the edges here, right around the edge. That looks good. Let's adjust the color a little. Can you see we have that really kind of vibrant blue in the sky? I don't want that there because it's drawing attention away from the subject. So we'll choose a hue saturation layer. And all we need to do is grab the saturation slider here, drag it almost all the way down. Once again, Command or Control I to invert. Using our soft white brush here, we paint that in where we want. Okay, so I don't want that vibrant blue out in the sky. You might like that. Leave it there if you do. And we might take some color away from the foreground as well. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. Let's add a little bit of color in at the subject there. Uh, hue saturation. Drag that up a little bit. Command or Control I to invert. And again, we'll only paint this in around the subject. Maybe we add just a touch more light to the subject. Again, it's going to help draw attention, make it interesting in that region. And sure, let's go for Ultra Doom and Gloom here. Now I understand this is not for everyone, but it shows the power of this workflow. You can make it as beautiful and vibrant and natural as you want, or you can get really creative and maybe infuse it with an inner emotion of your own. Okay, as I said, over the years I've had a hard time with anxiety and depression, and recently I found it really healing to infuse my photography and kind of release it, my feelings from inside, release it to the world through these dark gloomy images. Let's take a look here, let's zoom in and take a look at before and after using exactly the same steps in exactly the same workflow as before. We have a starting point of that there. And what I want you to imagine, imagine this is one of your images, but number two, what I want you to notice is how the subject just bounces out and is so obvious and so dramatic once we finish with this workflow. Take a look now. Look at that, absolutely phenomenal. In a matter of minutes, we've transformed something. Look, it's a nice photo, don't get me wrong, but it just needs Photoshop to pick it up and take it to the next level, and that's what we've done here. Absolutely gorgeous, I hope you love that too. But anyway, what I've got for you here, I've got a free Photoshop course, Introduction to Photoshop, which will get you comfortable, get you on the right track to being able to transform your own raw files that may not be up to their full potential and take them all the way to their full potential just like this here. Have a look in the comments, you'll find a link there. Click on that link, free trial, sign up. There's about eight videos, nine videos in the trial that will step you through the very first parts of Photoshop and get you comfortable so that you can begin the journey to transforming your images just like this. Thanks again for watching along. I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.